You will experience 100% of your life, but you're only going to remember 10% of it. When I heard a neuroscientist explain this at a conference, I had forgotten everything else that I learned that week and only took home that one fact. <laughs> so naturally, I started auditing my own memory. Like, why do I remember every single line to Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire, but I can't remember what I ate for lunch or any of my teacher's names from pretty much second grade on. And it's not that our brains don't have the capacity to remember more than 10%. Our brains are made up of more than one billion neurons that account to more than one trillion connections. So to put that in perspective, if your brain were a DVR, it would have to record continuously for 300 years in order for it to reach max capacity. And if you don't think that your brain is big enough, well, guess what? You can grow it. Yes, with uh, mental exercises as well as physical exercise, too. It's the hippocampus region. Look it up. Um, so it's not that I have a bad memory, per se. I mean, I am the child of a lefty. And in addition to a lot of things, lefties tend to do better than righties, um, except for you scissors. Um, they, uh, they tend to have better memories, as do their offspring. And perhaps I would have better recall if I had Barry White saying what I needed to remember. There were two different studies that showed women's memory was enhanced by a deep baritone male voice as opposed to a higher pitched one. Unfortunately, men's memory uh, did not have an impact whatsoever with a woman's voice in that study. So ladies, I apologize. He really does have an excuse. He doesn't remember what you said. But I digress. I'm talking about memory incorrectly here. Memory is not a thing like bad teeth or bad eyes or good hair. Memory is a concept. It's based on your current experiences and subsequent emotions. It's pretty much it shapes exactly who you are. So I started wondering, could I be a better person if I had better memories? And that's not always the case. There's been some really bad things that have happened to good people, and perhaps it's those bad memories that have led them to greatness. And thank everything holy that we do get to keep some of our bad memories, because if you didn't, you'd probably still be touching that hot stove, or in my case, licking that light socket repeatedly, not able to get the benefits of those hard-earned life lessons. So on my quest to understand this 10% phenomenon, I also learned that memories are malleable. We can rewrite our memories. You're probably rewriting memories right now as I speak. Memories are biased based on our current moods and our attitudes and knowledge. So case in point, I speak publicly probably on a weekly basis and about six times a year on a larger scale. And do you know what I think about every single time I have to speak publicly? Yes, that. Um, I, I think of a Miss Tennessee pageant that I did nearly 20 years ago. And no, this was not a beauty pageant. I was a hardcore geek. This was an academic pageant. And as a, yes, geeks are awesome. Um, but a part of that pageant, I had to write and recite a speech. And I practiced that speech religiously. I worked really hard on it. And I watched all of the other girls get up there and kill their clearly parent-written speeches. But guess what I did when I got up there? And that 10 seconds lasted a lot longer, and it was a lot more awkward up there. And it's that 10%, that 10% that I remember every single time that I have to speak publicly, not the other 90% of times that I've nailed it. But tonight is going to be different. I hope you remember that I told you memory is malleable, and I'm asking for your help to rewrite this memory tonight. I know you've been singing Billy Joel silently to yourself <laughs> since slide two, so I need your help and singing the chorus of We Didn't Start the Fire on the count of three, do not think, just do. One, two, three. We didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. We didn't start the fire. No, we didn't light it, but we tried to fight it. Oh my God! <laughs> Thank you so much. Now I'm gonna have a really awkward karaoke acapella thing stuck in my head every time I have to public speak. And I apologize if you do too. Um, but if you, in case you've already forgotten who I am or what I was talking about today, you will experience 100% of your life, but you're only going to remember 10% of it. I'm Rachel Beisel, and I hope you don't remember that I wore this exact same outfit last year for Fancy Ignite. <laughs>